Chapter 17. Lurching Around in the Lemon Limo. The text message came through a couple of weeks ago. Would I be able to drive a limousine for a wedding for a few hours? It'd be a simple job around town, and the limo was ready to go when I was. In need of both adventure and cash, and not in that order, I jumped at the chance. I mean, who wouldn't want to play limo driver? Of course, after sending the reply, I suddenly recalled that I've never actually driven a limo before. I've been in a few, but never in the driver's seat. And the day would be a complete trial by fire with hopefully no trials and even less fire. These are my notes from the day. 2.20pm. Suited and booted, I make my way to Limo Base HQ, otherwise known as one of the local pubs around town, where I find the limousine looking longer than first imagined. Not to worry because it was a Ford. Driven one of those before. Automatic. That's fine. No problem there. And about three times as long as my Mazda. Oh dear. Still, two out of three ain't bad. 2.25 p.m. This limousine has more mileage on it than old episodes of The Big Bang Theory. At a guess, it's gone around the clock and the world more than once. This could be interesting. 2.35 p.m. Survived a few corners and successfully missed everything while lumbering around. Limousine training going incredibly well. Pulled over to put wedding ribbon on the bonnet. While parked, I discovered the only door unlocked is mine which could make things a touch interesting getting everyone in, unless they're happy to climb over the barricade. 2.40pm. Boss's text message of double tap the remote to unlock doors, unhelpful, as the remote is currently out of batteries. Consider crawling through to the back area to unlock things from the inside, until I notice the door lock button on the dash. After pressing it for what seems like an ice age, everything unlocks. Like the engine, the button makes a lot of noise, but takes quite a while for anything to actually happen. 2.45pm. At bride's house now. Bride looks gorgeous and bridal party the same. Crammed the whole party into the limo. Their drinks esky took up most of the space in the middle. And the machine in kind responds by telling me in no uncertain terms through loud beeping that it's only got 60 kilometres left of range in the fuel tank. It seems to have the fuel economy of a very thirsty battleship and manoeuvres just like one. 2.55pm. Three kilometres later and we're at the wedding venue. Stopped by camera team, aunts and uncles, so they can capture the bride successfully trying to ungracefully step out of the back seat. With air conditioning blaring to keep things cool, including the drinks and the driver, the limo now beeps more frantically and tells me I have somehow only got 30 kilometres left to go. I'm now afraid to press any more random buttons on the dash in case something suddenly drains the last few drops of petrol in the tank. 3.10pm. With everyone inside the venue, I sneak a retreat to the nearest petrol station. With the weight of this beast, climbing up the local hills feels like attempting to scale Everest. As I pull up, everyone stops and just about breaks their neck to see if anyone famous is lounging in the back. Even without the tinted windows blocking the view, sadly all they'd get to see would be a pair of shoes and a half-eaten bag of chips. They were nice shoes really, but probably not worth a selfie moment. 3.23pm. Sneak back to the wedding reception with hopefully enough petrol to go another short distance. Decide to switch everything off to avoid limo exploding. Relax and read a book until one of the wedding guests comes out to reload the esky full of beers in the back for the bridal party. Resist the temptation to A, look at what kind of beers they are in the esky, and B, knock off the beers myself, as tempting as it would be, and as hot as it was. 3.40pm. Applause getting louder. Wedding must be coming to an end. Start the limo to move it forward. Nothing happens. Swear at it, and thumb steering wheel. Still nothing. A quick frantic call to the guy who gave me the job proposes the solution, rock the gear selector back and forth a few times like you're cranking up a generator, which amazingly works. The car obviously thought it was in a different gear than park. Roll forward and keep the car running while waiting for the bridal party. Regardless of the massive hole in the ozone layer this beast was obviously now creating, along with the buckets of fuel it was guzzling just to hold idle. 4.25pm. Now out of town at Scenic Bridge location. Car now off-road and part of the wedding photos. Probably should have hit it with a bucket of acid to dislodge the bird poo on the bonnet first. Of course, I only noticed the poo well into the photos and decide that Photoshop on the pictures later would be far easier than me holding up the photographer while dislodging some mammoth bird turds with a stick in front of the wedding party. 4.30pm. While photos being taken nearby, told by one of the relatives that one of the back stoplights have failed on the limo. Luckily, I find a spare on the front console. Unluckily, I can't find the Phillips head screwdriver needed to get the light cover off to change them over. Onboard toolkit only has the rod for a jack and no jack. 
If fined for a missing brake light by the local authorities, the bill for both the penalty and my possible therapy after this is going straight to the limousine's owner. 5pm. Back on the road and on the way back to the reception. One of the guests asks if I have any music. I have a fish around and the results turn out to be dire, as the only thing on board is Judy Sings 20 Party Classics, which someone obviously got for free after buying so much petrol back in 1920. Decide against the risk of discovering which party tunes Judy considered classics and stick with the radio. Discover that three quarters of the speakers are currently working. The last quarter come and go as they please. Probably should learn to sing or bring my own CDs for the next journey. 5.40pm. Final destination, the reception. Help one of the groomsmen retrieve the esky but fail to sneak out a brew for myself. Say my goodbyes and very slowly, because it doesn't do fast no matter what the situation, Drive the limousine back to base HQ to remove all the empties and the half-finished bag of chips. Sadly, no wallets or cash left on the back seat. Start hearing strange noise from the driver's side front tyre and suggest to the owner that it could be a wheel bearing on the way out. He just nods and adds it to the list of future repairs. Apparently, that list is now two pages long. 6pm. Back into my Mazda. Now, obviously, someone has broken into it and added another nine turbochargers, as it's lightning quick and stupidly agile compared to the limousine. On second thoughts, even the 100 years war would feel quicker than the limo, especially uphill. Swear to myself I'd never drive that terrible land barge ever again. And ended up driving it twice more for various functions before the owner sold it. What can I say? I'm a true sucker for pain sometimes.